You are the man behind the curtain. The Wizard of Oz. And you're a liar. Manhattan Island becomes resonant with Oz as the Wiz sees it doubling as the Emerald City, and the Cobosphere is adorned with the letters Oz. Oz is a Crowley sigil with the numerical value of 77 in Hebrew and is equated with Pan in Kabbalah. It is thus possible to view both Manhattan Island and the Lost Island as synchromistically compatible. Sonar this is, is Lost Episode Enter 77. Incursion on this station by the hostiles. If so, Enter 7. Seven. It was. The computer said if there was an incursion by the hostiles, I should enter 7-7. Seven, seven. So I entered 7-7. Seven, seven. We are viewing Star Trek Next Generation episode, The Pegasus. This particular episode is based on the Philadelphia Experiment, a famous conspiracy theory about a government project that resulted in the accidental teleportation of a battleship. Terry O'Quinn, our Oz Secret Society resonator, teleports a Stargate resonating technology into the episode on a hexagonal mandala. Pegasus. Sensors show the ship is still intact. However, 65% of it is contained within the asteroid. It looks as if half the ship materialized inside solid. Further adventures in the comic books seen on the Oz and Manhattan resonant Lost Island reveal a Stargate opening over New York with exiting marauding aliens. And multiple jumps through vortices by our heroes including Faux Flash. Part 3 postulated that helicopters were involved in the 9-11 Stargate ritual. Part 4 elaborated on the theme suggesting a connection between the helicopters seen flying over the pyramids the instant they collapsed on September the 11th and the Abydos carvings of what resemble modern craft including a helicopter. Owing to the discovery of Fofe McDuck's time-traveling helicopters in ancient Egyptian art, a rather bizarre scenario was hinted at, that of 9-11 involving no less than a portal to ancient Egypt and time travel. The X-Files movie brings with it the resonance of the famous Lone Gunman pilot episode and offers us these relevant synchromistic connections to ponder. Arriving by helicopter, Terry O'Quinn steps on scene only to be blown to smithereens Oklahoma style. Our Millennium Secret Society member, remembering that McDuck's time-traveling helicopter is called the Millennium Shortcut, who enters Oz-77 and experiments with secret Federation Stargate technology, ready to sacrifice himself for the government's ever-present building-exploding fetish. The arriving police vehicles highlight the September 11th resonance of the scene with the famous emergency number. Another scene of note sees Scully and Mulder having an unpleasant encounter with bees that are part of the government's diabolical plan to spread an alien virus through the unsuspecting populace. A curious coincidence about this subject occurs when we learn that Richard Hoagland's Abydos research in his website, The Enterprise Mission, sees a possible translation of Pegasus as a flying metal horse, which he views as connected to the depictions of flying craft in the ancient Egyptian wall relief. This particular synchromistic investigation has come across its own pair of Pegasus sinks, one flying over the Pyramid Arc in the Smurfs and another in the Philadelphia Experiment Stargate-themed Pegasus Star Trek episode. We are viewing a recent Justice League animated TV show and a Philip K. Dick Man from High Castle-like storyline where a modern-day America is in control by a Nazi-style government. Though Flash and his troop of do-gooders hurtle through Stargates, this particular one of Third Reich type origin. The 1991 film The Rocketeer sees Terry O'Quinn playing aviator and famous eccentric Howard Hughes. Go ahead, roll it. We learn that Hughes has built a secret jetpack that Nazi spies are trying to steal in order to further their plans for their favorite pastime, Global Conquest. A little later on, we see Terry O'Quinn saving the hero and his girlfriend, Jennifer Connolly, from a Nazi Zeppelin about to go Hindenburg in none other than a helicopter. Let's get out of here!
previously on Lost. Is that a helicopter? Is that how a helicopter is supposed to sound? Our lost Oz slash Manhattan resident island has its own mysterious helicopter encounters. The one who parachuted onto the island from a helicopter? She's not who she says she is. Keep in mind colony collapse disorder, hexagons, and the bee from the Abidus wall carving as we view the next few synchronistic clues. The wealthy industrialist who is involved with developing secret technology attractive to Nazis, Howard Hughes, arrives to give the Rocketeer an airplane, dubbed GB, and gives him another gift. Oh. Don't ever fly her without this. Joseph P. Farrell, author of SS Brotherhood of the Bell, along with Heinrich Palmgren from Red Ice Creations Radio, helps summarize where I'm trying to steer this investigation. The following is an excerpt from an April 2007 interview with the author. Um, yes, I did want to ask you, uh, Joseph, regarding the similarities between the Nazi Bell and, of course, the acorn-like craft that was downed uh, in, in Kecksburg. Tell us about that. Right. What's your take on that? Well, for those who don't know the story, there was a, a famous UFO crash and retrieval operation that occurred in a little uh, American town by the name of Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, which is just a little bit southeast of Pittsburgh. Uh, it's kind of in the in the hilly area there in Pennsylvania. And uh, this crash occurred on December 9th in, in 1965. And uh, unlike the Roswell story, this this object was seen by several eyewitnesses who got to the scene before the military did, uh, and they described it as being approximately 9 to 12 feet wide and, and about 15 to 18 feet tall and acorn-shaped, hmm. and it gave off a hissing and popping noise. And uh, those dimensions and the shape connect very clearly to the bell. In other words, uh, the bell's dimensions and, and its shape are very similar to what happened or crashed at Kecksburg. And the other interesting connection is the sound, because one of the names that the Germans gave the bell was Die Bienenstock, which is the beehive. Hmm. So <laughs> the bell, uh, <laughs> you know, the bell has another connection there, even in terms of the sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Disney's Chicken Little, we see hexagonal UFO cloaking technology connected to the acorn shape and teleportation. One way this mystical resonance could be interpreted synchromistically is a finger pointing at Stargate technology developed by Nazi forces, this technology being originally from extraterrestrial origin. The Nazi SS was a secret society. Heinrich Himmler modeled it after a medieval order of Teutonic Knights. It displayed ritualistic insignia, the Sig Rune. Two lightning bolts were worn on the left sleeve, Rune of Power, lightning bolts of the storm god Thor. A wizened old Millennium member unveils occult secrets to a recent initiate. While a familiar face critiques this gentleman's choice of memorabilia in the same episode, The most obvious and vivid connection to 9-11 and the Lost Island, apart from the World Trade Center interview, is the destruction and crash of Oceanic Flight 815. A 1983 Marvel 2-in-1 with an octagonal stop sign amidst the scene of destruction on the cover and King Tut, Akhenaten's probable heir on the back, contains the following mysteries. After teleporting to an alternate reality, Ben Grimm, the Thing, witnesses the destruction wrought by Galactus in this world. Destruction brought on by a machine not unlike the one he built atop the Twin Towers in Part 4. It is revealed that in this reality again the Nazis are triumphant, and the Pyramids fly the banner of the Third Reich, a giant stylized solar vortex swastika and a direct synchromistic hit. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown when you've got worries all the night.